Let's talk about super weapons today, and there are a few things that people pretty much always get wrong, at least in my opinion. When you look at Star Wars Legends and really dig into the source material, plus the stuff that came afterwards, you'll find that there's more than what you've commonly been told. And this video came about after I read an interesting Reddit thread. I'll put it on screen, but it essentially asked what was the best super weapon in Star Wars? Excluding, of course, the absurdly powerful and what OP he nicely calls an ass pull, the Sun Crusher. I've covered that in a prior video, but I want to talk about my thoughts on some of the answers and ultimately what I would choose. First of all, there were two really good selections that I saw brought up a bunch. Centerpoint Station, the massive super weapon in the Corellian system, and the Galaxy Gun, the Empire's new super weapon in Dark Empire. Both of these weapons share common features. First of all, they have range. We see at the Battle of Fondor that Centerpoint Station can attack targets from thousands of light years away, and the Galaxy Gun can fire as far as its projectile, which is hyperspace capable can, which is pretty much an infinite range. Centerpoint Station is unique in that it has other abilities as well, aside from making a massive beam of energy which can annihilate pretty much everything in its wake, Centerpoint Station can also be used to move objects. The Corellian Trilogy, as well as a lot of other stuff that came afterwards, suggests that the Corellian system was artificially created through the use of Centerpoint Station, as well as smaller gravity repulsors on each of the system's planets. Centerpoint Station has another unique feature I don't often see talked about, where it can create a massive system-wide interdiction field, basically stopping anyone from entering or exiting wherever it's located. Centerpoint Station is incredible, but it does have some drawbacks. First of all, it's very difficult to control. Again, going back to the Corellian Trilogy and also the New Jedi Order, it's really only Anakin Solo who has force-enhanced abilities and is a technological savant who's really able to make use of the machine. The station itself is also susceptible to damage and in fact Centerpoint Station is destroyed during the Second Galactic Civil War in the Legacy of the Force series. Centerpoint Station also has a secondary role alongside Sinkhole Station in containing Abeloth, and just generally, I don't want my super weapon to be involved with the shackling of a powerful Force entity. One thing I do want to mention is that it seems like Centerpoint Station doesn't have an infinite source of energy and it may need some time to recharge between being fired. Otherwise, with its interdiction capabilities, you could essentially put out a giant interdiction field across an entire solar system, not let anyone approach, and hold the galaxy hostage. It's not quite that invincible, but it's still very good. Let's talk about the other one, the Galaxy Gun, which I introduced earlier. The Galaxy Gun is super, super powerful. Basically, it fires torpedoes, which travel through hyperspace, and with a yield powerful enough to destroy a planet, or precise enough to take out a capital ship. We see that the torpedoes are also pretty much impervious to damage, but Empire's End also shows us that by the fifth shot, they've already had a malfunctioning missile, which is, well, interesting. The Galaxy Gun is like Centerpoint Station in that you can essentially hold the galaxy hostage, almost like what happens with the Zeistans in Episode 9, and we even learn in Empire's End that the galaxy has begun capitulating to Palpatine because of the threat of remote destruction, but I would say it's even more vulnerable than Centerpoint Station. It's slow, it's unwieldy, Wieldy. We see it can't get out of the way of the Eclipse 2, and it doesn't really have that much in the way of defenses itself. Obviously, you can station a fleet around it or place it at your most protected world like Biss, but I also bet after enough shots, the enemy could probably track the trajectory of your torpedoes and find out where you've got this thing stationed. You can protect against that by moving it around, and again, still an incredible super weapon, but to me, that's kind of what stops it from being the best of the best. Moving on though, I do want to take a second to mention one super weapon that I think has a ton of potential, but that wasn't actually mentioned in the thread. That is the Darksaber, at least it wasn't mentioned as far as I saw it. The idea of the Darksaber, as it appeared, well, in the novel Darksaber, is that you take the dangerous part of the Death Star, the really dangerous part, the super laser, you try to make it as small as possible, and you exclude everything else. Durga the Hutt was the one who made the Darksaber, and it didn't work for him. However, this failure was because... 
Durga was essentially cheaping out on materials and especially labor. It just wasn't built well. But I actually see the Dark Sabers as being somewhat Zeistin-like, a realistic, realistic in Star Wars terms, miniaturization of the Death Star. Not something that's cheap, but something that you can make five to ten of, then spread across the galaxy. I don't like the Zeistin because it's just so powerful and such a jump in power compared to everything else in the universe. I think a fleet of Zeistins, if it can be counted, as one super weapon, as long as you can get it off Exegol, is pretty damn powerful. But through all of this, you might be wondering, well, Justin, what super weapon do you think is the best? What would you choose if you could have one of these? Mine is another Dark Empire era weapon, the World Devastators. And I gotta say, since I first saw the thread, I've seen more and more people singing the strengths of the World Devastators, which is nice. But you can tell these things are really powerful because they were only defeated in like the most BS way possible, and that is that Palpatine had a secret back door built in, which he then gave to Luke. The World Devastators are like mini Star Forges, and by the way, the Star Forge would be up there too if the World Devastators didn't exist. They take material and essentially have a printer which can produce anything. The material goes into a molecular furnace and you can spit out anything from droids to eventually capital ships. I say eventually because one of the interesting facts about the World Devastator is that as it consumes material, it can also upgrade and improve itself. The World Devastators could also be pretty much fully automated and wouldn't just repurpose weapons or enemy vehicles, although they could consume vehicles, but would also take planets, dirt and feed that into the furnace. Another thing about the World Devastators is that they were pretty much impossible to destroy. The only time you see a World Devastator destroyed by anything short of Luke taking the shield down remotely is in Rogue Squadron, and those do seem to be some sort of different World Devastator subtype, but this is literally an existential threat to the Star Wars universe. When I first read about the true capabilities of the World Devastator in the Dark Empire sourcebook, I definitely thought of a Grey Goose scenario, where the consumption essentially grows exponentially and becomes unstoppable. You drop a World Devastator on a planet, you're going to have a very large, very upgraded World Devastator, probably planet-sized itself, at the end of it. And there's no reason to think that a World Devastator couldn't pump out more World Devastators eventually. So yeah, for my money, that's got to be the most powerful one. I think the Star Forge is really up there as well. I think that has some downsides as well, some very few small ones. The fact that it's one thing instead of a bunch of World Devastators is definitely one. But on the other hand, you have more direct control over the Star Forge, where the World Devastator could definitely kill not only your enemy, but eventually you when the droid brains get smart and realize they've got no reason to follow these organics anymore. Another thing about the World Devastator is that the captain of any individual ship can have a lot of power. That's why Palpatine put in the shutoff switch. I don't know, maybe there's some way around that. Those are just my thoughts though. Hope you enjoyed this sort of rambly video. Let me know your thoughts down below. Is there a super weapon I missed? Don't say the shotgun device. Do you disagree or agree with my takes? I look forward to reading everything. Until next time, be safe, have a good one, and may the force be with you.